Good evening, everybody. Keith here. Hoping everybody's had a good day, enjoying life, living life, loving life. Wanted to uh, talk to everybody tonight a little bit more about the construction of the co of, of the uh, codes and laws and stuff. Uh, kind of expand on the uh, video that I did last night. <coughs> and if you remember correctly, last night we talked about the UCC. Um, the state statutes, the uh, U.S. Code, the contract on the international sale of goods, and how it works throughout all the different jurisdictions, all the way down to your local municipalities, um, all that stuff. And tonight, I just wanted to expand on that video from last night with uh, some other important points that I wanted to make out last night and forgot. And that was, uh, you'll see in the post, it's, it's listed there. And basically what we're talking about is your private membership associations in regards to um, your international uh, labor union laws, as well as the First and Fourteenth Amendments of the Constitution, and, they all, and how they all tie in with the UCC 1-103.3, where it says that the laws are to be uniform throughout all the jurisdictions. And if you look at the post and you read that, and it talks about specifically in that 14th uh, Amendment, it specifically states that they have the equal protection of the laws. And again, so we're going to point out that the, unit, the laws to be uniform throughout all the jurisdictions. And if that's the case, like I explained in last night's video, when you make your reservation of rights under UCC 1-308, 1-207 is where it used to be, it's not been repealed, it's just been removed because it's been reworded and separated into different parts into, um, of the uh, UCC code. But you can use like wording. And of course, again, like, uh, reiterating last night, that reservation of rights is for your reservation of rights, privileges, all that throughout any jurisdiction that they try to hold you in. And so when we talk about the... Uh, um, those various jurisdictions and wanting to separate them, separate from them, we have to remember that those are public jurisdictions according to the corporations that regulate them. Again, like I said, the United States is a corporation hired by the American government or contracted through the American government on the American government side for its people for the persons, for its corporate entities, its employees and employers, for trade or business, which is what they call commerce or contracts. Contracts on, this, on the international sale of goods on the interior side of the American government, government underneath the United States is called trade or business. That's for the public body. But for the private man, we still have those inherent rights, like I said, of the private membership association, which is denoted in the First Amendment, and then clarifies in the Fourteenth Amendment that persons have equal protection of the law, so they have freedom of association as well. And that means if they have freedom of association, then you also have freedom of association because they can't force you to associate with their association while admitting that they have freedom of association as an equal right of the law. Okay? And that's why we say they're a private corporation and we are not subject to that. We are not party to the Constitution. We are not party to the United States Code. We are not party to any of that unless we have specifically been appointed, assigned, taken an oath, and it's recorded properly. None of that's been done. Period. So, the construct of everything, again, like I said, is uniform. Law, the law is uniform throughout all jurisdictions. And that means that you have to take the laws from the highest jurisdiction. And again, like I, like I said in the post there, you'll see how it ties together. The, uh, your union labor laws are tying in your, public and pro your international public and private laws so that they're uniform. 
so that they have equality between them, amongst them, and against each other. Okay? And I'll tell you about Jimmy Hoffa. Jimmy Hoffa, I'm, from what I've read of, uh, of, of him and his... Uh, The thing I'll just stick with the things that I, the way I interpret the events that have been, uh, that I have read, no matter who's recorded them, but the things that make sense to me out of his story and what happened in his life in regards to the uh, labor union uh, here in America or on America um, is that he knew the difference. And he was trying to show that to people, that you don't have to listen to your government. Because it all depends on two maxims. One maxim is you're not supposed to interfere with commerce. You're not supposed to interfere with another man's right to be compensated. You're not supposed to interfere with another man's right to make a fair exchange between himself and another another man privately. To do so would be acting as a third party and not a part of that meeting of minds association in that agreement of making an exchange. They can't force themselves into that situation. Okay? The second maxim which everything, again, this is all my opinion, my conjecture, but everything depends on the maxim, every man is worthy of his hire. And that is what the union labor laws fight so hard for and is in fact the foundation of freedom of association in the Constitution itself. It is also the foundation of the contracts on the international sale of goods and its equity. It has to be worthy. It has to be fair. Impartial. In order to uphold that every man is worthy of his hire. And that's as simple as it gets. And that's, that's a basic maxim that nobody can disagree with. It's like I said in a video I just did earlier tonight in regards to concise English. You can go into any court and ask them three questions, and I've said this before in previous videos over time. Do I have the same right and responsibility to carry my own beliefs? And they can't deny it. Equality, <laughs> equal among the laws, equal protection of the laws, okay? Do I have the right and responsibility to make my own choices? And again, they can't rebut it. Do I have the right to change my mind based upon the knowledge that I have? And as time, you know, knowledge changes, events changes things, and therefore the information that we need changes because the actual events change different outcomes and different availabilities of solutions and this and that. And so we have to be, be very conscious of exactly what jurisdictions are and what ours is. Independently, every man is worthy of his hire. And that means it, it only depends upon an agreement between myself and another man for a fair exchange in regards to goods and services without the exchange of money. You start exchanging money, you're using somebody else's property that they've provided so that you can make that exchange. You're involving them as a third party by using that third party's property to make the exchange fair. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> like I try to explain to people, and I'm going to keep telling you, um, 
I, I spent a three-year span of signing everything with, everything I did with the UCC 1-308 and then just never bothering with it again. I made my point clear the first time I said it. You have any questions, I'll, I'll clarify for you. No problem with that. You agree that I made a, made a signature as an authorized representative, right? And I clarified it under UCC 1-308. And I can use like wording. <laughs> I mean, it's supposed to be uniform throughout all the jurisdictions, right? I mean, so if I'm supposed to use common English in the courts of international law, then I better be using common English. And if you're going to be putting forth documents that I can destroy because it's nothing but babbling, because you're not using concise English that I comprehend, so I've got to... <laughs> make notes and tell you where you've made errors on the record and have you fix them. And if you can't fix them and make it make it make sense, then obviously you don't have a case. You've stated a claim upon which relief can't be granted. This is your unlimited power to contract right here. Use your heads. Use your head before you sign anything and make sure all the words and everything are concise. If they're not, then you don't have a contract because you can't possibly agree to babble with each other and comprehend what, you, what each other's saying so you can come to a meeting of the minds. So think about this stuff, people, and realize that everything that you have today is dependent on your own choices and how much you make your how, how much you value yourself. Are you going to value yourself in a way that you're going to use a third party's property to make a, a fair exchange or can you make that fair exchange yourself by using the right words in beginning was word my words my bond I don't need somebody else's instrument to bind my agreement that I make privately with another man I don't need it why do you are you not worthy Anyway, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys. Love y'all. Have a great night. God bless. Bye.